So your writing assignment for this week is to do a poem explication of uh, one of three poems that I'm assigning. And what is a poetry expl explication? It is uh, different than a formal essay, so I know you've been writing formal essays so far in this class. A poetry explication is slightly different. Um, in it, you're just doing a sort of short analysis, uh, maximum 500 words where you are just explaining the poem and um, looking at uh, some of the features that make up the poem's meaning. So you want to pay attention to both the form and the content of the poem that you're analyzing. So I'll just read you uh, this short description. So a poetry explication is a relatively short analysis which describes the possible meanings and relationships of the words, images, and other small units that make up a poem. Writing an explication is an effective way for a reader to connect a poem's plot and conflicts with its structural features. So basically what that comes down to is you're looking at the content of the poem, so what is it about, Was it what is it saying, does it have a message, uh, so you want to just break down uh, what this poem is about, but then you also want to connect it to some of the sort of poetic devices that are also being used. So the smaller units that make up the poem, such as word choice, imagery, uh, figurative language, so similes, metaphors, personification, alliteration, all those kind of things that we've talked about, and identify those as well, and explain them as well. So uh, that's where you're going to draw your connections between what is occurring in the poem and then how the poet is uh, conveying that message. So I'm going to give you a series of steps that you can go through in order to write your uh, poem explication. I also expect you to use the discussion board this week as a way to sort of offer and provide, um, interact with one another uh, on, about the poems that you're discussing and uh, give each other feedback and interpretations and uh, you know brainstorm using the discussion board about possible readings of these poems. So step one, um, you should read the poem uh, silently to yourself and then read it out loud. It's important to sort of get the sound of the poem as well, so don't skip that step of reading it out loud because sometimes we catch things uh, in terms of rhythm or uh, emphasis that might be lost if you just read the poem silently. And we know poems are meant to be read out loud, so uh, take the time to do that step as well. You want to reread it uh, multiple times. Um, that's an important step. And then the next thing, uh, step two, consider the poem as a dramatic situation in which a speaker addresses an audience or another character. Begin your analysis by identifying and describing the speaking voice, the conflicts or ideas, and the language used in the poem. So this is where you will acknowledge or recognize uh, who the speaker is, what type of person are they doing, what is uh, contained, I guess, in their argument or their perspective, their point of view. And then is there an implied auditor? Uh, we use those terms speaker and auditor. So is there an audience or another character that's being implied or spoken to? Or is it a general audience? And then, uh, can you identify any conflicts or main ideas, themes, that type of thing that this poem is about? Um, so can you sort of condense the meaning or major conflict or ideas of the poem? Uh, so this will be the tricky part, but again, I think in these poems it should be pretty clear what, the, what they are about. And then last, you should, again, look at the language used in the poem. So I would take a highlighter pen, underline any words that you maybe want to look up the definitions of that you're not quite sure of. And uh, maybe there's multiple meanings that a, po a word has that the author is trying to sort of uh, bring to your attention. So highlight any words, important words, or words that you think are, are um, indicative of themes or ideas of the poem. So the next steps uh, in an expi explication is to look at the basic design of the poem. So sort of look at it written on the page and you can look at the structure of it. Are there clear stanzas? 
Is it a certain type of poem? Uh, so you're looking at the parts, the structure, and the language. Uh, can you identify it as a sonnet, as free verse, as a narrative poem? And then consider some of the special uh, features of poetry. So is there a rhyme scheme? Is there a certain uh, rhythm to the language? Can you pick up alliteration or assonance? Uh, can you identify any sort of figurative language, metaphors, similes, and other poetic devices? Uh, to understand the content, you might ask yourself, look at it as if it was sort of like a story. We're used to interpreting uh, fiction already, so we've done short fiction. So look at the basics of the story and try to identify who you still have characters, right? You can still have a speaker and an auditor. They are characters in a way. Uh, you'll still have a setting, where, when, why, what is occurring. All those question, questions can still be asked when analyzing a piece of poetry. Uh, it's not that different from a short story, so if you're a little intimidated by poetry, just look at it through the same lens as a sort of narrative, uh, a story, and try to pull apart um, the basics of storytelling. Is there a central conflict? Who are the characters that are involved? Where, when, and why are they in this situation? So once you start your actual writing process, uh, you're not going to write an essay, so it won't be exactly organized like an intro, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. An explication is more just a longer um, elaboration of uh, the, what, the, what the poem is about and then how the author goes about uh, creating meaning through language. So you can follow this pattern that I'm going to give you and then uh, you'll have no troubles writing your explication. So in the first paragraph you are going to present the larger issues of what this poem is about and inform the reader uh, what conflicts are dramatized or what the situation is that's being described. Uh, so again, you don't need a thesis statement exactly or an introduction. You don't start broad and go narrow like we've talked about. You just jump right in to your analysis. So you could start uh, with either of these sentence prop prompts and either of them are good or you can devise your own. Uh, but this poem dramatizes the conflict between or the central theme or idea of this poem is. So this is a good way to start off your explication get right into the main uh, analysis of what this poem is about. So following from that, so you've summarized the poem and told me what it's about, then you go on in your next paragraphs to elaborate. Uh, so expand on your discussion of the conflict by focusing on details of form, vocabulary, and poetic devices. Uh, so you could go stanza by stanza or line by line and uh, sort of explain the poem that way uh, and identify any sort of uh, important word choice, the vocabulary being used, or uh, poetic devices that are uh, evident in the poems. Um, and if you can identify what type of poem it is, that's also good. So if is it free verse or sonnet or um, et cetera, you know, a narrative poem. And then you're not, an explication doesn't really need a formal conclusion either, so you're mostly just um, wrapping it up in an informal way. Um, so you don't have to restate your main points, you just sort of end your explication with what the poem ends with. So you're explaining the ending of the poem in your conclusion. Um, so in some poems, the themes or ideas will be wrapped up and sometimes the conflicts won't be resolved. So you can analyze uh, the ending of the poem. So just some sort of conventions that you can follow when writing your poetry explication. Uh, make sure to always refer to the speaker, uh, the speaking voice as the speaker or the poet. Uh, but try not to confuse the author with the speaker of the poem poem. So don't confuse Coleridge as uh, 
as if he was the ancient mariner, that kind of thing. So you want to differentiate between the speaking voice and then the author. Also use present tense when writing about the explication. So always use present tense in uh, literary essays, poetic essays. Um, it's always a good practice. And then when you're giving your citation, so if you're drawing my attention to a certain line of poetry, a quotation, uh, make sure you cite the line number, not the page number. So it's always a good idea to number the lines of your poem, and this will make it a lot easier uh, when citing or using quotations. And then finally, when you're quoting poetry, you should indicate the line break uh, by using a forward slash. So in this example, the speaker exaggerates his love when he states, quote, and I will love thee still, my dear, and then the line break is a forward slash, till all the seas gun dry, and then pay, er, line number seven to eight. So those are just some easy ways, easy sort of tips you can remember when adding quotations to your poetry explication. So you will have a choice of uh, three different poems. So you pick one and then you write your explication. Uh, so the three poems that you can choose from are Mar Marge Percy's Barbie Doll, Seamus Heaney's Digging, and Kim Adonanzio's First Poem for You. So you'll pick one of these poems and write your explication of it following that sort of model that I uh, just discussed. And then you're going to use the discussion forums this week to share your ideas and interpretations of these poems and discuss them. And maybe you'll get some ideas from what other people say and share your own ideas and uh, identify any sort of poetic devices and share those as well. So you'll get a lot of ideas from using the discussion boards as well uh, this week uh, to complete your writing assignment. Marge Percy's Barbie doll. I'll just read it out loud. Uh, this girl child was born as usual and presented dolls that did PP and miniature GE stoves and irons and wee lipsticks the color of cherry candy. Then in the magic of puberty a classmate said you have a great big nose and fat legs. She was healthy, tested intelligent, possessed strong arms and back, abundant sexual drive and manual dexterity. She went to and fro apologizing. Everyone saw a fat nose on thick legs. She was advised to play coy, exhorted to come on hearty, exercise, diet, smile, and wheedle. Her good nature wore out like a fan belt, so she cut off her nose and legs and offered them up. In the casket displayed on satin she lay with the undertaker's cosmetics painted on, a turned up putty nose, dressed in, pink, in a pink and white nightie. Doesn't she look pretty, everyone said. Consummation at last. To every woman, a happy ending. Now Seamus Heaney's digging. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests, snug as a gun. Under my window, a clean rasping sound. When the spade sinks into gravelly ground, my father, digging, I look down. Till a straining rump among the flower beds bends low, comes up twenty years away, stooping in rhythm through potato drills where he was digging. The coarse boot nestled on the lug, the shaft against the inside knee was levered firmly. He rooted out tall tops, buried the bright edge deep to scatter new potatoes that we picked, loving their cool hardness in our hands. By God, the old man could handle a spade, just like his old man. My grandfather cut more turf in a day than any other man on Toner's Bog. Once I carried him milk in a bottle, corked sloppily with paper. He straightened up to drink it, then fell to right away, nicking and slicing neatly, heaving sods over his shoulder, going down and down for the good turf, digging. The cold smell of potato mold, the squelch and slap of soggy peat, the curt cuts of an edge, through living roots awaken in my head, but I've no spade to follow men like them. Between my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it. First poem for you by Kim Adonanzio. I like to touch your tattoos in complete darkness when I can't see them. I'm sure of where they are, know by heart the neat lines of lightning pulsing just above your nipple, confined as if by instinct the blue...